I spent all afternoon following reports of a plane leaving Santa Ana Air, Santa Ana being basically Bob Hope. No, not Bob Hope. Whatever. Yeah, Bob Hope. Bob Hope Airport to Toronto to find out it was just Robert Hershevek. That's how my afternoon went. How about yours? I mean, I didn't give much credence to those reports as soon as I heard them, so... Well, whatever. This is Coffee with Spec. I was... Yeah, no, it, it is weird. It is, I mean... <laughs> We'll get to that in a sec, but it was weird that idiot. John Morosi got tied up in this whole thing. But John Morosi's an we'll, idiot. Well, we'll have to. We'll, we're going to have to record this because, like, we do this a few days in advance. So I'll, we record I'll this on early. We record this on we'll a Friday. This on and it a, goes out Monday. So if anything so if happens the, over the if weekend, if anything happens, we'll record and insert it, and we'll even like mention that as we do it. But we may talk a little bit about what happened on Friday before saying before whatever insert ends up going. Yeah, in, and then so. luckily to another pot, so my spec swings, which is baseball, that I'll probably record that. That's why I haven't really recorded oh, that. Spec swing. Spec swing. That's why I haven't really recorded because I'm trying to like, I don't want to record and have something bigger drop. So, so I'm trying to keep it weekly, but it's not strictly because like of well, how what the about, news What is. about what's his name going to the Yankees? No, I know that's part of it, that, but I'm sort of because they kept saying like, "Oh, Tony will sign by the weekend." So I'm like, "Okay, if I record it Monday and I put it out Tuesday, we'll be good, right?" We'll see. So, but let I me. I mean, they keep saying words that are like, "Oh, he's gonna be gone as soon as winter meeting starts." And then yeah, so, our, so, so let's like, nope. So let's start there. Let, let's let's recap what <laughs> what happened this morning. Um, from now, Gulag, <laughs> now everyone's least favorite MLB insider, John Morosi. He has now replaced John Heyman. <laughs> he has now replaced John Heyman for his Aaron Arson Judge thing. Interestingly enough, Heyman, Heyman, Heyman doubled up with, uh, with, uh, what's his name? Uh, with everybody else. That, that, no, 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 no. With the guy who... Report it. Who is the one that I messaged you? The screenshot that he oh, reported um, that he wasn't on the train Bob, or on the Bob plane. Nightingale. Nightingale, yeah, he doubled up with Nightingale, and he's like, "I can also confirm that Shohei is." <laughs> no, but the whole thing is like that's how it generally works. It's like in that thing where it's like, "Wait, is he at home?" Yes, he's at home. So I want to break this down. What happened? It started about twelve hours ago from recording this. It started with Morosi tweeting out. Again, 12 hours ago. Source, Otani's decision is imminent, possibly as early today. And then followed up by Blue Jays are reported as one of the finalists for Otani as his decision approaches as he reported on MLB Network. You know, he does his report. And then and then a separate thing happened with the guys from Talking Baseball where I guess some Redditors were tracking flights and found a plane that was leaving um, Santa Ana at like 9 40 in the morning pacific to go back to toronto going to toronto uh and that started this whole thing that it was otani and sort of continuing on the john Morosi thing Anshay otani remember that a physical examination will be extensive for a record-setting contract even if ahani makes his choice in the next 24 hours as expected the agreement may not be finalized for several days due to the medical review process which is true. And then we had an interesting sort of thing. We're skipping ahead six hours and I don't, we're skipping ahead here to when this plane landed and then Jason Benatendi said plane or jokingly said my plane landed in Toronto. So that was him. And then this is where things kind of hit the shit hit the fan about one p one o'clock this afternoon Pacific. We had this sources Otani is en route to Toronto. A representative of his agency, CAA, would not comment on comment when asked about Otani's travel plans. At this hour, Otani has not has does not have a deal signed with any MLB team. This is on Twitter, and I want to point this out. And this is why I kind of giggled when I first looked at this. There's a community note that says this is false, as per John Heyman and Bob Nightingale. And that the last time Rosie tweeted was five hours ago. Yeah, Morosi's uh, gotten embarrassed, huh? Yeah. Well, what's even funnier is in the midst of all this, um, 
when you were at- and it's funny to have Heyman be one of the voices of I know something after the whole arson judge when, debacle. When you were still at work, this this is there was another thing that happened where a guy working for Dodgers Hangout or something uh, tweeted out an article that it's now gone. By the way, that said Otani signed with Toronto, which again, and this is where I sort of led. Uh, my tweet, one of my tweets here. Uh, uh, one of my tweets. Sorry, I'm deleting the that one. Uh, where was it? Where is 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 it? Oh, where I said this. It is possible Tani will sign with the Jays, but man, if he wanted privacy in the biggest, and the, it was the biggest sticking point, how can he continue on this path? I can see JP, who is the guy who, uh, who wrote the article on that Dodger Nation or whatever, saying that Otani was signing with the Blue Jays. Um, seeing JP, knowing an executive in the Dodgers organization who got word about Otani. However, I doubt he'd say something to anyone. Maybe I'm wrong. Usually I am. But if the Dodgers did leak the Otani to Jays news, bro, that is a level of disrespect I didn't think was possible. And then after that, it was Otani's. Not not in Toronto. He wasn't on the flight to Toronto. He's at home. And that's where we know that. Oh, and by the way, the Angels did make a move today. They traded Stassi and Max Stassi and David Fletcher for Evan White and uh, Tyler. Tyler, 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 uh, Tyler Thomas, a uh, pitcher. There you go. So that's that. Sure. <laughs> that that that's everything that happened. That's it. That was it. That was the whole day. All for Robert Hershevek of Shark Tank to go to Toronto. But that was the day, and I'm just gonna get this off the off the rip. If Otani does leave, I I I get it. But um, like I said, if privacy was his number one thing and sort of keeping things under, like out of the public eye as much as you can. I, I'm just going to say this. I think the Blue Jays might be out of it because it, this, this happened just by happenstance. And I, we don't even know necessarily what led to Morosi thinking this. The only thing I could think of, and I said and I said this earlier, I said he might have had somebody at the airport in Santa Ana who saw a plane go to Toronto and thought it was Otani, told Morosi in some way, and he just ran with it. I don't understand why in this day and age, and we see it all the time in this day and age where it's like due diligence, I'm going to sneeze. So if you want to say something or not, um, that's fine. I, um, um, you gave me no time. <laughs> no, Sorry. Um, but I you're think, like, if you want to say something, well, I, figured, too, I, oh, I guess you're not going to say anything. No, I thought it was just going to be a longer pause. Uh, no, but, <laughs> it just, it just sounded like it. you were like, why oh, didn't you say that? It's no. like, I didn't have a chance to say that. <laughs> um, but, I, but, but I think that's probably what happened is someone saw a flight record because private planes, if I recall correctly, they have to log like when they're leaving or where they're leaving, when they're leaving and where they're going. Like that. I don't think chart. I don't think actual planes have to do that, but I know like, well, they do do that. But like private planes have to like log it. <laughs> so I don't know if yeah. someone saw a flight log and just made that assumption that it was. But this all started from Reddit. So Reddit got the L day, so did Morosi. But I'm guessing that was what happened. Somebody saw the flight log and just sort of ran with it and didn't do it. But how the Dodger thing happened, I don't know. It doesn't look good for them. It doesn't look good for that guy either. I mean, I told you, I told you the, my theory is, is that Shohei has a team that he's not, he's not controlling it right here. He's not saying, Hey, go out and do this. Go out and do that. Your theory is tinfoil he's hat saying, theory. I don't, I don't know though. It's like show what's the best way to keep secrecy though. The best way to keep secrecy. 
The best way to keep secrecy is to point everybody in a different direction while just doing nothing. So Shohei's sitting here. Maybe Shohei has the side. Maybe he's already had a handshake agreement with Artie or something. You know, like I'm not saying he that's could, the case. The whole thing is, but I'm too. saying he could have a he could have a handshake agreement, and they're saying we'll announce this thing on 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 the the thirteenth or something. And yeah. then and then what he's really doing in the meantime is trying to make sure that nobody knows he's already signed with the Angels because they're waiting for that day to make the announcement. Oh, and possible. in the meantime, he's got a team that's saying, all right, uh, let's just distract people. Uh, yeah, let's let's start leaking out. Oh, he's on a plane to Toronto. Up, oh, up. Oh, Morosi even thinks it because one of his trusted, you know, because these are like, look, it was clear to us in the during this past season that that nobody knew what was going on in Shohei's head. Yeah. So for people to suddenly have like, oh, they got sources. It's because it's because guys like Morosi are having to build these sources on the spot and be like, uh, yeah, I've got this guy who's supposed to be in Shohei's inner circle. So if he tells me, then I'm going to have to believe him because it's my only possible word. Yeah. I but have that's to... the dangerous thing is, is you're building a new source. And when that source lets you down, it's like, well, yeah, I guess I have to admit that I, in the grand scheme of things, I know when it's like, you're sitting on a story, sometimes it's hard to not say something. But like I said, in terms of this, like, I mean, could it be that he did sign a deal with Toronto and he's going to do everything out here and not really report there anytime soon? Like, it's possible. I, anything in the realm of possibility is possible. But I will say this. The Blue Jays said nothing all day. They, they didn't. They said nothing all day. So in terms of, I guess, the idea of the team team, the quiet, the team hasn't said nothing anything the only team that's publicly said something was the dodgers the dodgers said something publicly that's the only team we know so far i don't know if he does want to keep things private does this is this a strike against the blue jays it might be like we don't know what he's thinking because the number i saw in that dodger article was 600 million dollars and i'm gonna tell you right now already ain't signing 600 the six Six hundred million dollar contract. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Dodgers aren't gonna sign a six hundred million dollar contract. I'll tell you that right now. To be fair, I don't think the Blue Jays are gonna sign a six hundred million dollar contract. No matter how deep them pockets are, no matter how, no no matter how deep your pockets are, you're not signing six hundred million dollars over ten years. Not happening. Yeah. It's it's not gonna happen. You, I'll say five hundred. But I ain't 600 over word, 10, 12 the years. Word is, is not happening. The word is that the Dodgers are offering somewhere in the realm of 620 million over 10 years. No, they're not. That That's insane. You're, you're There's no way. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it you're would not, be ridiculous. But you're not going to. The, the whole thing is think I'm about just it logically. Saying what the reports are no, saying. I, that's fine. Like that. If that's the report. That's the report. But logically, think like logically speaking, if you were to like the way these contracts work, these very these hefty AAV contracts, they're backloaded all hell and back. So at some point, he's if if that's the case that you're backloading this contract, say he signs twelve years, thirteen years, sixty two, six hundred twenty million dollars. And it's backloaded. The dude's gonna make a damn near close to seventy million dollars in his towards the end of the deal. That's insane. Like, th like th that 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 that's levels of like annual salary we haven't seen. I don't think that's. I don't think any team is willing to take that chance. No matter. And I'm not saying, mind you, I'm an Angels fan. I'm a I'm an Otani like. You know, I, I watched Tony for six years, and I'm not saying he's not worth it, but what I am saying is a backloaded contract for for a Tony of that of that length and that magnitude is insane. Like, you, there's no way you'd have to front load it, or you'd have to like do something where you're not going to be paying him like a, a, the majority of the money on that back end there, because that's wild. Like that, j just like I said. Do you want him to make, you know, almost $70 million at the end of that thing? Probably not. I mean, I, 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 I would think not, but <laughs> what do I, you know, what do I know? Sure. Maybe I'm the crazy one. 
I mean, you are, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, I, 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 I'm just trying to, I don't want to say justify it, but <laughs> I, I, I can't see it because that, to me, that's that, that's insane. I think the thought process a lot of these people have is, is you'll make your money back in international, like. Sales and marketing and things are like that. Are you gonna that, make sixty? So. Are you gonna? I mean, you will. Yeah, but like, let's say you're the Toronto Blue Jays and you're trying to sign him, and that's the money you're offering him. You're saying what you're saying is, is I'm gonna make this investment over ten years to make Toronto the Toronto Blue Jays the biggest baseball brand in Japan. I don't think you make that much though. And I like I've had this talk plenty of times with other people when it comes to the marketing side. I'm not the one I'm not a mathematician, so no, yeah, I, I, but I, but, but, I, I I don't necessarily disagree with you. But I understand what I'm marketing saying is, is I think that's the big I think that's the big appeal. And then plus if he wins you a, a couple world series, then all of a sudden you know, I, like I, him yeah, and, that's him different. and Jr. Well, yeah, that's the difference. But the whole thing too is is in terms of like the, the Blue Jays, let's say, versus the Dodgers, or hell, even the Angels, is the Dodgers and Angels are in the position of they have stars, they have stars locked up long term for the you know we have the Angels have Mike Trout, the Angels have Mike Trout for you know however long his for the next seven years or whatever, Rendon for the next three or four if he kind of comes to you know back to form, so in terms of that like. In terms of just that, you're like that money set, right? Like you're not really gonna have to worry about it. You're not as of now. They're not really looking to like have to break the bank on somebody else on another on a young guy as of right. as of now. They're not going to the Dodgers same position. Not really having to look to do any sort of major overhaul yet. The Blue Jays are the Blue Jays are going to be staring down. You know, Kevin B- or Busy or not Busy. Don or Bichette and Vlad soon. You know, that's coming in with like three to four years. They're going to want, you know, hundred million dollar plus contracts. So let's say they get between any or, you know, 150 million to 200, hundred million dollars on top, you know, over 10 years, how, whatever they're going to be getting. Like that's the stuff you have to be thinking of. And no matter how much money these get, you know, the, the blue Jays owners can piss out you just have to look at it and just be like, there's money. No matter how much money you're making on the back end, no, but no business wants to be taxed where they have to be to maintain something. And that's something that I think you're the baseball media is missing is this whole thing of like, yeah, they can, but should they like that? That's the stuff they have, you have to worry about. And I know it's not necessarily my job or your job to worry about that, but that's something they have to keep into account is, oh, hey, we have to re-sign Vlad. We have to re-sign Bichette. We have to do all this with the money on the books. Like, that's something that's big that they can't ignore because, like, are you going to have Vlad and Dante walk? You know, Vlad and Bichette walk? Like, that that stuff that has to be taken into account. And right now, we're not really looking at that. Yeah, but what are you gonna do if Vlad walks in three, you know, two or three years, and that's gone? Bichette walks before that, or the same year, possibly, or year after. That's gone, and now you're left with Otani with nobody else to play around him. Like those are the things that I think right now that we're not, you're not hearing, because like you said, oh, you win a World Series, it doesn't matter, we got it. But it's like, does Otani want to look two, three years down the road and just be like, I have nobody around? Then it's the Angels, but worse. Like, I, I, I would assume he's thinking this, but I don't necessarily know if people in the media are thinking this because I've heard nobody say, "Hey, look, wait a minute." The Chet and Vlad don't have longer deals. You know, on the like the Cubs are sort of in some position, but they can you know re re up some of these guys, but like the Dodgers. Oh, they have Mookie. They got Freeman. The Angels have Trout still for an extended period of time. Like, to me, that's something that's worried about. It's like basketball, right? Like, you have to deal with this in basketball sometimes, too. But it's like, 
I don't know. I, maybe I'm trying to talk myself out of him leaving, even though I think 60%, I think he's going to leave. But I do think that financial aspect is part I of it, right? 65% he's going to stay. Okay. Mostly uh, because this just feels just like when the fever pitch was, was getting hot with the towards the end of that season where Trout ended up re-signing. Where it was like, where it was like a fever yeah. pitch of everybody being like, "He's gonna sign with the Yankees or the Phillies. It's gonna happen. Nobody would want to play in Anaheim." And the next thing you knew, it was like Angels and Angels signed Trout to record-breaking contract, and it was just like, "Oh, it just feels like the same thing all over again." Where it's like, it's like everybody's like, "There's no way Shohei Sh- Sh- wants to win." Who well, said so? Thing. Well, it's. Well, that's Joey totally, didn't say that. No, he did. That that's what's funny. It's I'm like, sure. I'm sure. I'm sure he wants to win, but he never said I need to go to a team that wins. But th- but here's who with something even funnier though. If you think about terms of like he wants to win, why would he go to Toronto? Toronto's could be the fourth best team in the East because you have ba- even, Baltimore even with him. Yeah, because Baltimore just won it. Baltimore's not going anywhere. The Rays are always. You know, up there, the Yankees just got way better, and then it's the Blue Jays and the Red Sox. Like you're battling probably between third and four, and there's no guarantee you're gonna get into the postseason in that division. So I don't under, like as much like, well, that's a murderous row lineup. Okay, yeah, it's a murderous row lineup, but look who you're up against. You're up against, uh, you know, the the or like you can't just write off the Orioles. We can't. You can't write off the Orioles. The Yankees are gonna have I, a murderous row lineup, like. This stuff has to be taken into account before we go. Well, you know, he'd look great there. You know, who else he would look great? Atlanta. He'd murder in Atlanta, and that'd be a murder. Well, he probably has a better chance of going to Atlanta and winning a World Series than he does Toronto. Hell, he has well, a better yeah, shot I mean, in the, in LA winning than winning a World Series. Well, like, that's what I was about to say. I was going to say like, if we're going on that logic, it sounds more like he's going to the Dodgers because the Dodgers he he basically is guaranteed to win the division for the next few years no th- exactly so it's like all these other teams where it's like that mold fits better if he wants to win but it's like somebody else tweeted out look if otani's biggest priority is autonomy the angels offer the most autonomy we don't know it, it, toronto the last 48 24 48 hours have sort of proven that that's probably not possible at least to a certain degree. How much fits the like I said, the Blue Jays didn't say anything. They stayed quiet to their credit. They didn't they said nothing. So who knows? But that was just somebody sniffing around. Not not anyone official, but how much did that explain? Because I'm sure Otani's was aware of what was going on. And then if they say like, oh, it'll be this weekend. Who knows? It might not even be this weekend. Like, I, it also too. I think people so badly want this to this pin to be pulled so that other people can sign. But I don't think tracking a random flight's gonna get it done. But I digress. I just, I, I, I still to this <laughs> point baffle those how, how Morosi confidently was like Shohei is on a plane to Toronto. Like he didn't just like. Show there's there's reports that show he may be on a plane. No, he was like, show he's on a plane. I have a source telling me this. It's like, then why is Nightingale source telling us that he's in you know in Anaheim or wherever he's living in Orange County? Like, yeah, I they saw like I said, someone had a saw a flight log and said, oh, Santa Ana to to Toronto. Is that be Otani? Yeah, like, like is Morosi source just some worker at the airport? Yeah, like, probably. Honestly, it wouldn't shock me. If it was it's nobody inside the Otani camp. It's just, it's just it could. You know, it like, very, what, but this is why. Well this been. is why I put my tinfoil hat on and say, what if it's some? What if it's some scheme by by Otani's camp to? Well, I kind of want. Let me see. I want to see. Everybody. Let's see. I, I'm sort of curious. I don't know if this post is still up. It might not even be still up. I keep checking. I keep checking my uh, my uh, Twitter to see if anything's gone. No, no. I want to see. For... I want to see if there, this plane thing was still up. Um, I'm trying to look because there was. 
like because that's where this whole thing started was was that like by the way yeah. i just read a tweet that your your trojans weren't able to pull a recruit away from uh utah that's how fall the mighty that's how far the mighty trojans have fallen what okay okay or he doesn't want to play for the Big Ten. In the Zacharias Big Ten. Williams. How, how? What recruit was he? Not the is one. still locked in with the Utes despite receiving an, a, a recent offer from USC. He didn't want to leave. It's his prerogative. You're mad. I'm just kidding. Do you know who he was? Exclamation point salt. I don't even know. I don't even see this thing anymore. But like there, I, I remember seeing something this morning that it was a, it was something on Reddit. Oh, is this it? Oh yeah, it was a flight. Yeah, it's a plane. It's an Otan. Yeah, it was the flight logs. Like I know it started on Reddit, but I, don't, I can't find the original post. But yeah, today was an absolute insane. Like, just shows you what happens when like one guy just takes something and runs with it. Twenty four hours later. So if you're you're seeing this, which means we were a day early on this. Um, so around noon, Shohei Otani. I'd rather made it. still have done the recording mostly yesterday. Thank you for that for- interruption. So uh, we were a little bit early. And Otani made his decision, and he's staying in L.A., just playing for a different L.A. team. Uh, Otani signed with the Dodgers, you probably already know, for 10 years, $700 million. Bryce is now in her let's, already needs to go mode. Uh, I recorded my thoughts. I might, I might keep this permanently, like, as a thing. <laughs> Anytime we talk about the Angels, just be like... Um, so Artie doesn't get it confused that most of us do want him to sell the team. Yeah. Um, I will say this though. I will. I'll, I'll give when I get my thoughts in a sec. I will say this. I I don't know how many owners could have outbid what the Dodgers did. None. So. No. Not. So go ahead. But go ahead. Your thoughts. So the breakdown: seven hundred uh, over ten years. No opt out clauses. There's a lot of deferred money, so it's not like they're gonna get handcuffed a lot uh, but we'll see sort of what that means as the years play out but um i recorded my own thoughts on it. it's about six minutes long basically the sum to put it the summary of it is basically that that's a lot of money to turn down um my guess and i no one's gonna know but if i had to guess the angels probably i said it in that video Probably offered between 500 and probably 600 mil. So they they blew it out of the water by 100, probably closer to 200 million dollars. And I don't think Artie was going to go much higher than that, even though he's like, well, I will. We don't even know if they offered him a contract. We, we don't even know. We're not going to know. Um, but I also did say in that video, the Angels ultimately failed him. I think Sam Blum sort of agreed with my sentiments or I agreed with him that this ultimately is at the fault of Artie Moreno, all the shit he's done in the last six years, all the seasons under 500, four managers in six years, you know, scandals, uh, selling the team, not selling the team. It took you until this off season to actually do something. It ultimately falls at his thing. And the worst part is he has to stare at it um, for the next 10 years. It's not like he went to Toronto, which we thought he was probably going to yesterday. Or what? Um, he's gone down the freeway for a lot of money. And that that that's literally what happened. This is the fault of no one but Artie. I know it's stupid to blame an owner for losing a free agent, but it's one of those things where it's like this could have been prevented. Maybe. Um, but he definitely did he didn't do any favors to help himself or help put them in a better situation. But again, I it's 10 years, 70 million. I don't necessarily know if anyone's going to outbeat that, you know, outbid him if it was just money. 
We don't know. We don't know what the Angels even offered. Like I said, I have a funny feeling it was probably around Trout, Trout's level, but like I guess like five hundred million, if I had to guess. Um, but my 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 honest thought is that the the Shelly's camp probably gave the Angels the opportunity to beat the offers, and probably what drove up the cost was. They would go to the Dodgers and the Dodgers would say 55 or, you know, 550 million over 10 years. Went to the Angels and they're like, fine, we'll do 560 over 10 years. And it just kind of drove it up eventually to the point where the Dodgers, I mean, like the whole deferred thing does end up meaning that that price that we all were thinking Shoei was going to go for around 50 to 60 million, um, he ends up still getting about 45 to 50 million per season now. Yeah. Um, while deferring the rest of that. So so it still would have been a record breaking contract even with just the present money. It's basically um, what I my, isn't it what I said oh, last night where it's like you're gonna get this backloaded deal and you're like I know you said in my stream when I was streaming where you're like, Oh, it handcuffs them later on. They could have deferred it till after he retires. So his we don't his AAV might not be his AAV is probably gonna be around forty probably for this contract and they're going to pay a lot of it post retirement and just have like a Bobby the Yeah. I was also responding to that like half an hour after I woke up because I was working. I kind of, yeah, I kind of figured you were uh, taking this morning. So, um, it happened um, while I was napping. I figured anything else. But no, um, <laughs> No, I mean, ultimately, look, like, ultimately, yes, this. This has been my, I mean, this is, ever since already said he was going to sell the team last year, um, it was like, it, it's like, that's been my dream, is just sell the team, already. You're not doing anything for it. His whole thing of, his whole thing of, I've still got a lot left to accomplish, unless the rest of this offseason involves him signing the remaining, like, big free agents. Um, what what else are you going to be able to accomplish at this at this point? Win a World Series um, before they do. Like at what in the next decade you you win out you win. But one. but without but without no no but like you have to if you're gonna win a World Series before the Dodgers do if you're if you're gonna say my goal now is, is to beat Shohei to the punch to show him that he should have stuck around. The problem with that is. Unless Artie is going to change his whole track and pay three major starting pitchers astronomical amounts of money and then pay a couple of huge position players to come in and supplement Trout, I I just don't see... The Dodgers are, are a year or two away probably from winning Worlds. I mean, they're, yeah, it's... it's, they're, it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to... if And my guess is they're probably... God, Dodger fans are gonna hate me. I says, I think you're like four years away. I don't think you have the pitching, and the prop. See, and that very well may be the case, but still, like, where are the Angels? The Angels are definitely yeah, the Angels are way close. are farther behind. But if you're looking, see, the thing is with the Dodgers is the Dodgers position themselves to where they sort of had to boom or bust for Shohei. They signed nobody last year. They didn't really. They signed Freddie Freeman the year before, so they were in a spot where they could do this. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's. It, it kind of goes back to what I said with the Blue Jays. Is if you went to the Blue Jays, they you got a small window and then you don't have to pay out a lot. The Dodgers gonna be in that same position. It's just a matter of well, they can still draft well, so they can still draft, they can still get guys. But ultimately, too, it's. It, I said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. I'm very hesitant to sign anyone to long term deals like this, always, and. Same thing with Shohei. I know at the end of the day, oh, it's Shohei. But you know how I feel about deals like this? I don't like them. I think they ultimately they ultimately go bad because the last handful, of, you basically, right now, you're going to have, he's 28. So let's say you probably have four years, let's say four to five years of like good peak Shohei. Are you going to win a World Series in four to five years? Like, that's what you basically have, is you have a window of about four years. And he's coming off his second Tommy John, and for Tommy John, it takes about two years to sort of get things right. So 
He's not going to be back to pitching for him until 26, which means you have essentially two years. Like, if you can do it by then, do it. But it's the whole thing of we've seen it years before. In 21, the Dodgers had one of the best, I mean, hell, even last year, like 21 and 22, they had one of the best lineups in baseball. Got to the ALCS one year and the ALDS, NLCS one year, bumped. AL, you know, DS last year bumped. And then, you know, this past year, DS bumped again. I don't know if this necessarily fixes it, but I mean, we'll see. I just don't. I, it's a weird two prong question because, from a baseball like analytic, like looking at standpoint, that window is not as wide open as I think people think it is. And especially with, like, knowing how these contracts are going to go, you're on a kicking clock. Like, you could do a lot in that four years, but take it from someone who had to watch Pujols age terribly. You're probably going to see that again because we realistically, he could go out and never and throw a couple innings and his arm's gone and he's never going to pitch again. Then you have a really expensive DH. Like, I think there's a lot of, st even if the Angels did this, I'd have these same things where it's like, hey, I'd be excited, but it's like, wait a minute, his arm could just go flying in, into the seats. Like, there are risks, inherent risks here that I don't know if Dodger fans necessarily get, but I understand the excitement. But it's like, if you're looking at it pragmatically, there is a clock here with that. And that's like my, that's like the hardcore, like, Okay, fandom aside, so hey, enjoying of Shohei aside, you had th he's been excellent for three years. Next year, if he mirrors his, you know, first only hitting season, you know, same sort of let's you know another forty home run season, home, home run campaign. He pitches again. But like I said, I don't think he's gonna be fully back to normal health till about twenty five or twenty six. Like there, like I said, there is inherent risk. Does the risk outweigh the reward, or the reward outweigh the risk? I don't know. But you, the Dodgers still have holes to fill. The Angels still have holes to fill. The biggest thing for the Angels now, and you can say you, I'm sure you agree with me on this one. You have to respond. What do you like, Artie? It's one of those bits. Where it's like Artie. What are you gonna do, Perry? What are you gonna do? Because well, in my opinion, the Angels either. The Angels have to do one of two things. And they have to do it right away. They either have to go out, get huge offers put into the biggest remaining free agents, and there's plenty of them available. You have about two. <laughs> I Well, no, I know. But I'm saying, like, you can get a lot of good talent if you spend the money. Yeah. They're not the superstars of the league, but you can get a lot of good talent. No, I mean, but you either have to go and say, we're going to put a World Series roster on the field now. Mm -hmm. Or you have to say, look, losing Shohei was it. That this was this was where we were going all in. If we had Shohei, we could have done a bunch of other stuff. And and, and in my opinion, I, if, if, if you either have, have to go all in right now. Or sell off as many pieces as you can, yeah. and, and I mean, I don't know. I, I I've never been one for a lot of the people who call for the like even Angels fans to trade Trout, but this is the first time I'm I'm seriously going. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's time. Yeah. Maybe it's time. It doesn't seem like we're gonna. It doesn't seem like we're in any position to win a. Uh, again, this could change with some big signings or some big trades. Um, the problem is, is you don't have any pieces really to move around to tr to get a good piece in a trade. And so the, 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 the ultimate thing is, is you either have to say, we're going to put everything in and then, you know, start to try to win now. Mm -hmm. or, or let's trade Trout for a bunch of prospects. I know, I know, I know that's like a game of like, Trout's great now, and what are these prospects going to turn into? You don't know necessarily. Like you know the what box. they could. It's but the family it's guy like, scene where it's like the box could be anything. It could be a boat. But but that's the thing is, 
right now, if if the Angels don't pick up pieces, I would rather have the box of I don't know than the crap that is on the field right now. Yeah, they've got some. They've got some fun young stars in the making, but I don't. I just don't see them getting up to the point where they need to be in time for trout to really be an important part of that winning. If that makes any sense. Yeah. But, but by the time Zach Neto is really getting at a high clip and Ohape is getting at a high clip. And, and if, if you keep Shanwell around and, and in maybe one of those, uh, one or two of those other guys pan out, um, by the time those guys all pan out, trout's probably hitting 252, 25 home that. runs. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not even that, but like, that's what I'm saying. Like he's barely going to be doing anything for you. And, and why not right now? Just say, Hey, you know, Phillies or whoever has, you know, the prospects that you want. Hey, Braves or whoever. I don't know. I don't know who the teams with the good prospects are right now, but you go to the teams with, with the top prospects and you say, Hey, you want to, you want to have the best, you know, one of the best talents that our generation has ever seen. Yeah, we'll give him to you for no, a haul. I, I'm going to just say this on that regard. Trout, they already said Trout won't be traded, and I don't think. Yes, but 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 you're I don't saying think, that. Yeah, but you can't that the, hold on. The of, hold you on. Might have Trout. No, no, hold on. Or, uh, hold on. You know how it's already hard to lose one star if they were to say, "Oh, in the next like come next week they trade Trout." Like you would, you're going to lose fans already. But you would lose the rest of them if they traded Trout. Like, yeah, but you're gonna lose you're gonna lose the fans in the long run if you're just going to say we're okay with with sixty five win seasons for the next. Five they've done years. it for the last six, so I don't think six plus. I don't think that's magically gonna like deter anyone. Yeah, but but that's what I'm saying. You're losing fans either way. If you invest in your future, you might be able to gain them back. Right now, if if you're thinking five years down the road. You could potentially have more fans if you have a promising young team that's winning 81 games than if you have a 65 win team. Well, ultimately, that's the, just my point. Ultimately, that's just my point, though, is, is, is the Angels either need to crap or get off the pot. Ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, there's still plenty of time for them to make some sort of change. Will they? Probably not. Uh, I'm willing to bet. But that's going to put a bow on this thing, unless you got something else to say besides sell the team. No, already sell the team. Okay, already sell the team. So all Sorry. that, uh, we're gonna hand it back off to me saying obnoxiously. Wasn't that a great segment? Uh, Here we have a couple directions we can go. Here, uh, Bryce, do you want to go at the Lakers in the in tournament, in season tournament finals? Finals, we're gonna be champions, baby. <laughs> or we shift over to some video game talk for the second half of this thing. Do we want to? I don't know how in depth the Laker conversation will be. I was gonna say I don't know that it's gonna be much for me other than they blew out the they blew out the the they blew out Suns. the Pelicans and the third of the Pelicans they blew them out and JJ Redick thrashed uh, Zion, but I don't know how to, I I made this comment to CJ and I said I don't know how serious I can take this tournament when both the Nuggets and and Heat didn't get in, which, you know, the Heat, I think the Heat are a little What, what it really means is that the Heat and the Nuggets are just going to not make the finals this year. And it's going to be I, a Lakers, uh, a Lakers, well, uh, well, my, uh, Pacers I, finals. I, I guess my, my thing sort of was with this is. That is, that is what you should react with is okay. Lakers, okay. Pacers, I mean, finals. I, I guess the whole thing is at the end of the day, <laughs> at least for the Lakers, it's like. Is it gives us it gives Lakers Lakers fans and Pacers fans like a reason to get excited because it's sort of like you, we can kind of be like oh LeBron can still do it in short game series. Stellar stellar commentary there from from Bryce. Sorry, hold on. Go ahead and keep talking. I gotta talk to my daughter. Oh, this guy. He had to record. <laughs> he recorded another video. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are listening on audio uh, and can't do this, Bryce, and he used to put up a, a still picture of himself when he had to walk away to do anything, whether like family family stuff, whether it's his wife needed him or his kid, he needed to do, help with the kids or his daughter, one of his daughters needed something. 
He used to put up a still picture. He has moved on from that. And now he records like short videos that he can just do in a loop. So he put so to so he can do something else. So he has this video you can't see, like if you look at it, it just it loops. Well, actually, now it pop. Oh, no, there it goes. It just loops, so it looks like he's interested in anything I'm saying, which is funny. I can't hear him. I didn't say anything. I was just making fun of his video looping. Oh, and his card fell out. This is so professional. Oh my gosh, this is. Great. <laughs> oh come on! I'm just trying to get the viewers something to look at. So no, I, I know, but I just, but I was laughing. So I'm like, you just put a new loop on. Uh. Now, I think like I, this time I wasn't doing it to be lazy during your no, no, conversation. I know. It's just, with, uh, but I still think it was funny. That's all. Uh, no, yeah, but I think no, I, I figured it was better though than than putting uh, what is it, this one? Yeah, the still picture. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, hey, it's a good looking picture of me. It is a great picture of you. Very professional. Dude. Very professional. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Very professional. Look at that. Very traditional. Short on top, long on bottom. Uh. <laughs> but but I but we assume the Lakers that sounds so wrong. But we assume the Lakers win. Uh I hope so. I think LeBron is actually feeling like this is an important tournament to is win. LeBron, is LeBron Because LeBron can now be like, I won this many finals and I won an in season tournament final in case that ever becomes Take important. that take that, Jordan. How many in season tournament champions do you have? Zero. That's what I thought. <laughs> but at the end of his career, Jordan will be like, or at the end of uh, LeBron's career, Jordan fans can be like, well, he was zero for zero while LeBron was one for five. <laughs> there you go. But no, um, we assume they win. Lakers look good for what it's worth. Hopefully they can just keep it up the rest of the year. You know who else looks good? BYU's Me? basketball team. Oh. Is that what you're going to be covering? Was, is that what you're going to be covering now when Bryce and BYU is their basketball team? We're shifting to basketball. Probably. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so I'm, probably this week, as meaning as of when this is put up, um, oh, probably this week, I will record a little bit of football stuff with like transfer portal and okay, stuff like that. So, so enough, I guess for that was our Laker talk. A whole three minutes to five minutes of it. It's great. Um. In terms of video games, we had a lot. We had a, we had a good amount. We had the game the game awards that Bryce probably didn't watch because he had to work the next day and it was long. I watched the whole darn thing, and uh, I can. Uh, hold on, say, I'll hold be on. back. We can break it down. Here comes the video again, guys. Ready? Ready? There you go. All right. So we can. I guess while he's up, he can only listen. Um, I guess I can break down uh, how the video game awards went. There's some. I thought there was some good stuff here. So if you're into some video game talk, uh, here you go. So let's, I'm going to quickly uh, just highlight the winners and holy crap. Okay. So sort of, uh, I am trying to think how I want to do this in terms of like, just uh, in terms of like best gate, but me says Baldur's gate took a lot. And I was surprised at Baldur's Gate. Not that I think Baldur's Gate's a good game. Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate, I think, is a good game. I didn't think it was as good as... I didn't think it was going to be this good. Uh, I figured it would have a role-playing game. Uh, are you back? Or is that your thing? It's the video. I thought it, I saw it click. Um... I didn't think it was going to win voice. I figured Spider. I honestly thought Spider Man getting shut out was probably the bigger story. Um, Spider Man not winning anything at all. By the way, Iron Mouse winning uh, content creator of the year, VTuber. Iron Mouse is great. I've seen a little bit of her stuff. Um, stellar. Mario Brothers Wonder won family game. That's not surprising. But like I said, 0 for 7 was spider-man which is the biggest thing about it the one thing by the way game of the year Baldur's Gate 3 did not have that going i voted on it i think i voted for i think i voted for spider-man i thought spider-man was going to do better than it did and it didn't again i think that i i think streaming had a lot of it because 
this game, you kind of could go anywhere. But, but it didn't, and it went over for seven. But the game I want to talk about that is coming out that I am hyped, Dragon Ball Sparking. Dragon Ball Sparking, a.k.a. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 4. Uh, it looks good. A lot of characters. They showed us Bergamo, who is a minor character that I think is going to be pretty big because that's a minor, very minor character. Didn't do anything in the series, but... but but uh, having showing that character sort of shows we're gonna have a lot more characters, and we had a lot in Budokai Tenkai in Budokai Three. I think had one of the biggest rosters. Um, but if it goes, it gets it'll, it'll grow. It can grow even more, for sure. I'm trying. I'm looking. I'm gonna see something. Uh, I'm looking back through game award winners. I'm gonna say, did Spider Man win like Game of the Year twenty? Like 20, whenever it came out, it didn't, right? No, because Last of Us, Last of Us won it. Last of Us won it 2020, which would have been Miles Morales. Which would have been Miles Morales. Uh, then Takes Two. Wow, Take Two. It Takes Two won it in 2021? Wow, that must have been a lot. That would have been light year, huh? Dream win content. Didn't Ludwig win it in like 19 or 20? Valkyrie won it? Won creator of the year? Dream. Who won it last year? Oh, Ludwig won it last year. Oh, okay. Um, no, I from soft. I don't know. Like there there's so many. Like this year was really, really interesting. Um I definitely didn't see it coming uh at all. I didn't see a lot of what happened there happen. Um, Rice is back. Um, um baby. But Game Awards, yeah. Buddha, uh, Dragon Ball Z, Tenkaichi 4. I'm excited for. Uh, Bryce didn't see it, but that's... That's bad. Okay, oh, but and let's, a new, let's oh. talk about the real... Oh, and a uh, new uh, Monster Hunter is coming out. There's a lot. There's a mm. lot. There, there's a lot. Uh, like, here, I'm just going to... Here, I'll read off the announcements and then Bryce can talk. I know what Bryce wants to talk about. Um, We got a trailer for... This is going to be at Bryce's Alley. We got a new trailer for Rebirth. New trailer for Re, a new trailer for Rebirth. Let me put this into the podcast part of everything. Specs. I have to be Finish Final Fantasy 7. Final Fantasy 7 I have to remake. Be, I have it's to, more than about time. I have to be Final Fantasy 7. I have to be Kakarot before next year. Uh, another game that might interest Bryce is apparently Fortnite is getting a is getting Rocket Racing inside of it. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> uh, day Fortnite? Of- you, you, you think I'm interested in Fortnite? Hey man, they got Lego Fortnite. I'm what gonna play I, some Lego what Fortnite. I, what? That dude, that dude's a main. He, that that dude's a maniac. <laughs> Shout out King Platt. Uh, he is an interesting person. Do you watch his streams at all? Sometimes I I slip in and out. I'm not as much. You of don't a, talk. He would just he wouldn't yeah. shut. <laughs> uh, Hideo Kojima. Because really, he would probably talk back to me for a long a good while. Time. Yeah, I don't always have. I don't always have time. Uh, so there's a new there's gonna there's a new game coming from Dead by Daylight coming out. Oh, there's a Blade game that I'm excited for. And then if you're a Sonic person, you're getting um, new titles in Jet Set Radio, Shinobi, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, and Crazy Taxi. And then oh, also uh, free DLC for God of War uh, Ragnarok. Sure. Um, yeah. But the real big news, GTA 6. Yeah, GTA 6 dropped the trailer. Um, Finally. I mean, it felt like they were never going to even release like anything. Yeah, from it. it's not coming out for till 2025 um, some point. So that means if you don't have a console that can play it, you have a full gear to get one, which is good. Uh, it's going to it'll move. It'll be on PC at some point. So if you want to wait, you can wait. I guess uh, 
So yeah, new GTA 5 announced, GTA 6 announced. So we'll see what happens with GTA 5. But, um, yeah, that's exciting. I haven't played really a lot of GTA 5, but. Sure. But, I mean, GTA is always a fun time. Back to South I mean, Beach. I haven't done. I I haven't done any GTA since GTA Two. That's a while ago. I at least played this. I think I played most of the story of Vice City. I played a little bit of San Andreas. And then Never did I know those. I have GTA Five because I liked the idea of like driving around a town. Yeah. The first time I tried GTA Five. I just felt like the car controls were all... I made it. You know what I did in GTA 5 one of the first few times I played it? I made a chrome buggy. I made a. I stole a Doom buggy and made it and put chrome, and painted it chrome from head to bumper to bumper, including the wheels. Mm. The future is chrome! The future is chrome. Is there anything else you want to add to that? No, I mean, just other, other than the fact that, like, everybody's like, whoa, it was either the reactions or either, whoa, this looks awesome, or, oh, huh, okay. I think I was somewhere in the middle, like, oh, that looks good, but it, to me, it's way too, honestly, as much as I want, I'm excited to play it, I'm like, it's way too early to tell. For me, it's more of, like, a thing of, like, I just need people I know who will play it, so that way I can, like, kind of get into it. the similar stuff with them, so... I'll probably play it. Yeah. But we'll see. Oh, uh, uh, one of the last things I have to bring up, um, this isn't video game really, this is back to sports, but uh, Zach, Zach Wilson. Wilson. That, that I'm not going to lie, that is the funniest thing ever. Back to starting. So the report came out at the beginning of the week that the that it was like the Jets are, it, it, sources say that the Jets want Zach Wilson to start. He doesn't want to. But that he, is, he has expressed reluctance to start. Oh, I it's would. Like, I would. I, I don't know uh, if it was real or not, but I'm like, you know what? I thousand percent would be like, you know what? But supposedly no. Zach went into to uh, uh, Robert Sala and said, give me the ball. I mean, I wonder if Rodgers got to him because Rodgers went on McAfee and kind of very much sort of downplayed it and was had He didn't a, just downplay it. He straight up was like he, he, well, he, first of all he basically what was said interesting like, was he said what was interesting <laughs> was he said I can't believe people would leak that out but he also said it's a bullcrap thing and it's like so oh, clearly, what's going on are somebody making is somebody like are, are you mad because somebody leaked it or because the reporters are making stuff up I think like, it's a little I think a, I think here's what I'm guessing is I think I think when they said hey we want we're gonna go back to Wilson I think Wilson said I think I, I wouldn't doubt if Wilson said, no, I'm not doing this again. I'm not going to be your scapegoat again, only to get blasted by everybody that it's my fault that we're not doing anything. No, you can guys can go shove it. I wonder if Rogers talked to him and said, no, you're going to do this. I'm here now. I, I can handle the media stuff and the scrutiny. You don't have to. Because I'll make sure they don't say anything because of McAfee. Because he now, because the whole thing is with him, McAfee, he has essentially a microphone to just be like, "No, here's the narrative," and just write it his own way, which he did. Sure. So if that's the case, they have nothing to worry about. Although he did basically say, "Like I've never had to deal with leaks like this when I was in Green Bay." It's like, no, it's the Jets. This is dysfunction at its highest. Yeah, well, no, and I think that was the whole thing of the Tim Boyle experiment, experiment was, well, and what was funny about that whole thing was that it was almost like Jets fans were like, okay, well, if Tim Boyle's not working out, let's go to Trevor Simeon. And then Trevor Simeon um, came in for the second half of that game. Simeon doesn't work. Let's go to fumbled, Joe Flacco. He, fumbled on, he oh. fumbled on the opportunity. He had an opportunity to try to put de- put in a game-winning drive against the Atlanta Falcons, and it. he fumbled the yep. football. And it's like, oh, maybe our problems are deeper than the quarterback position. Yep. And then, it's like, I'm not saying Zach Wilson's all that great by any means, but what I am saying is I don't think we really know much about Zach Wilson because there's so much dysfunction coming from the Jets organization. And I think Zach Wilson's already planning in his head, hey, I'm a free agent this offseason. 
Uh, or uh, if he's not, a, I don't. I think he is a free agent. But if he's not, it's like he's probably planning on getting out any way he can to be like, look, I'm. I need to go try my fortune somewhere else. Uh, I can't do this another year. Is he on? What year is he on? No, he's got another year. He's got his fifth. Oh wait, no. Well, you know, he had the plate because he has a four-year deal and a fifth-year option for twenty-five. Question is, does he take the fifth year option or no? It's a team. It's a team. Oh the well, team has to do it. My guess is they. My guess is they would would prob. My guess is the Jets are gonna decline that, and then they're gonna sign a, or they're gonna draft another quarterback and and keep. keep well, the you're not. Going. Well, if you have two years of Rodgers, you have Rodgers next year. Yeah, but there's a lot of Jets fans who are like, this is such a deep class of quarterbacks. It is a deep class but that of quarterbacks. Was the same, but it was also the same thing that was said when Zach Wilson was drafted. I think this, you had Trevor I think, Lawrence and I think, Mac Jones. I think and, this and, class and, is better than that class because this class, these guys, you know. I I think with the... Justin the Mac, Fields, Zach I think, Wilson. I think with that class, the problem with that class was, I think that class was very raw. I think the class you're having this year... Is I think you're gonna have a very you're, you're gonna have like you have Caleb Williams and Derek and Drake May who are probably like separated and I think Caleb Williams is way above everyone else but I think you have like this middle pack of quarterbacks that will probably be good at this level like better than a lot of the guys that are having problems right now but it's a matter of who do you get in that middle of the pack and how do you how do you shape them in the next couple of years. Because if you're not, if you draft one of these guys like a Bo Nix, like I'm only using Bo Nix example, because I think he's in this middle of the pack, is like let's say you draft Bo Nix, but you don't really like you're you rush him or something. I think it could look bad, but if you went to like the Broncos or something, I think it would be that might work out better for him than like if he went to like the Jets because he might be thrown into it and not really do well. I think that's the thing you're going to see with this class. I think you'll get got teams that want to draft quarterbacks or might be like nearing the end with one of them. Like you'll see them, but I think they'll be a little bit closer to the chest with who they're going to, who they're going to be playing or who like who they're going to draft. Cause I think you're because in that class, you have guys who didn't work out. Zach Wilson didn't work out. Mac Jones didn't work out. Field is questionable, I guess. A lot of them are duds, and I think that's something you're going to see this year, this coming draft too. Is I think you're going to see once Caleb William goes, the next one to go will probably be May, and then who knows? Sure. I I mean I think because like looking at like thinking of like the main picks, because let's say, so like realistically, let's just say like okay, uh, Chicago decides. Because Chicago, really, Chicago holds the keys to this thing. Because if Chicago says, with number one, we're taking Caleb, meaning Justin Fields will get traded probably during the draft. If Justin Fields instantly becomes available. Justin, I'd rather trade for Justin Fields than draft un, draft a quarterback, right? Hypothetically. Because yeah, sure. because let's that's a theory because or they could just say hey we're gonna take a, we're we're taking Marvin Harrison Jr. number one we're not gonna think twice about it we don't want a quarterback like right now with Chicago it's that weird spot of like well what Chicago, Chicago holds the keys to this whole thing yeah Chicago who just trade the first round pick and garner assets again garner you know more assets again like they did last year and just get more picks I don't think that's gonna happen. But if you're a team that needs a quarterback, you're in that same like they're going to be in that same position. Like New England could move up a slot to get Caleb. I don't think they they are, but it's one of those bits now where it's like, is it that deep where you got the things in the middle? Because Carolina blew this, sure. blew this whole thing has ruined this whole thing because your first three picks right now are Chicago, who could go quarterback. New England going is going to go quarterback. Arizona probably not going to go quarterback. I think they're they're going to stick with Murray, and then I, don't, I think four is the Giants. They're probably going to go quarterback. Yeah. So realistically, like the Giants could probably move up and the Patriots could move up, but I think it really comes down to 
what what Chicago does because Chicago goes Caleb Williams. There are plenty of teams I think will take Justin Fields and try Justin Fields, but I don't. Nec- but again, we're so far out from the draft we don't necessarily know. Yeah, because like I said, the Jets. Hell, the Jets could be like, we don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to do. Let's move up and get a quarterback and not have to worry about it. Like, there's just there's so much right now. Yeah, no, I mean, I honestly think that you'll still see Zach Wilson next year, but not for the Jets. Yeah, they could trade Zach Wilson for a second and a third. It's possible. I, it's just like I said, it, it's so hard right now because we don't necessarily know what where anything's necessarily going to go. Um, yeah. Is there anything else? Nope. I think that's it. So I think we'll leave it there a little bit shorter in an episode, but, um, but yeah, uh, like I said, we're going to have at least we'll have episodes of the rest of the way out. So meaning we'll have one on the 18th. We'll probably there won't. So the next Monday is Christmas. So probably next week will be sort of our special S Christmas episode. Cause I'm not going to, we won't put anything on a Christmas which is Monday, the following Monday. So maybe next week will be a little bit more lighthearted, hopefully, um, like we did last year. Woo! And maybe we'll do like a co-stream because my birthday's right around there and Bryce is off. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, I'll have videos all up this week. I'm sure Bryce will probably, Bryce will said he was trying to stream, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, have your... Maybe at the very least I'll post a uh, video. Yeah, soon. you should. But, uh, maybe, maybe maybe just play some Rocket League and keep it keep it simple. There you go. All right. So have yourself a good one. We'll see you guys all next week for like our top ten memories or movies for Christmas, like we did last year. I think that's what we'll probably do. We'll make it. I think that sounds good. Yeah. We'll have a good. Well, and then oh. we'll sort of future cast a little bit too. But have yourself a good one. Have yourself a good week. We'll see you guys all next week. See you guys.